Hello and welcome everyone. So I'll be explaining a problem from taken from Light OJ, uh, name problem name is Scarecrow. So basically, I did this problem using a dynamic programming approach. Um, although this problem was in inside the greedy section, but I could not find a fully greedy uh, manageable problem uh, to solve. So I could not find a uh, I could not find to solve the problem in fully greedy approach. I had to go for DP. Also, n was so small, so I thought that that would be nice. Now. So the problem, basically, it wants us that you're going to be given an array, okay? And inside that array, you're, you will have two types of characters. One is infertile and one is fertile character. Now, you need to save the your fertile character, which are basically dot. So you need to save these dot characters, or you could say cover these characters from uh, animals or, like, uh, any hazards uh, from any hazards so um, uh, basically you have to cover uh, these dots but the the equipment that you need would be a scarecrow you can use a scarecrow to cover uh, specific regions of uh, characters consecutive characters which are basically which is basically three how is this actually working now if you see that if I put a scarecrow at this position, it will cover, it has the ability to cover these two positions as well. Okay, consecutive left and right. So it can cover these two positions. Now, what you have to find out is find out uh, what is the minimum number of scarecrows you need in order to fill out each and every dot. Okay, in order to cover each and every dot, um, what is the minimum number of scarecrows you need? That's all. So basically, this uh, you just need to cover this dot as, as much as possible. Now, you might think uh, there are several uh, approaches, greedy approaches that we can do, but actually that does not meet the condition here. That's exactly why I went for DP. Uh, I'll discuss what are those greedy conditions. Now you might think that, okay, since we have to cover only the dot, uh, so I will be directing my way to the dots. I will try to figure out what is, uh, what are the like consecutive three length dots available inside my array, and I'm going to cover them first. After that, uh, like first I, I will try to cover this substring, like triple dot and then uh, slowly I'll move to like this type of substring because there are two dots here and then I'll try to move only one type of dots uh, and to cover them in order to make it a minimum number of moves now you if you if you think it like that it's not gonna be possible because I have already created a test case that does not meet the condition which is this now if you think that I will always first cover my um, three fertile dots uh, substring with my scarecrow now for this case you might want to go for this string definitely for sure if you want to go um, and move like that that approach that greedy approach like that uh, first you will move to here this substring and then this Okay, so I have got covered all of them. And then what you are going to be moving to this type of substring where there are only two dots and then some hashtag in, uh, infertile. Then you would move to this. And then what is actually remaining? Okay, this is remaining. Okay, I'm covering this and also this. Now look, by doing that operation, that greedy approach, or uh, by implementing that approach, you are actually... Uh, using uh, like what one two three four five uh, five number of scarecrows but what if you could do it's something in a much more efficient fashion it is possible to optimize this result down to four how is that now think about it if you could choose this substring as first and then if you go to this 
and then this substring and then this substring does that help yes that does help and that does optimize our result up down to four so we need only four scarecrows if you go like this or if you move our approach is like this okay after thinking about that okay then you might want to drag and shift your mind towards another goal which is okay now nah, i'm gonna first try to find out this substring and then i'm gonna look for the other one in order to like save my or optimize my result so i will try to look for apart from the same um, uh, like three consecutive fertile dots i will check the other substrings first and then i'm gonna look for the efficient one that might draw our attention it might happen you know you might think that that, that might happen but turns out what it's not possible using that why is that I've got a test case for you that too now if you think it like that you would uh, just think about it if, if, if you think if you think it like that then you would go for first this substring right of course you would definitely want to go for this substring now if you go for this substring what you are actually left you're left two other substring right there and right there and that you can only you have to use at least uh, definitely to scare crows okay so that's not efficient too so I hope you get that what I'm trying to say you cannot go either way if you do this substring if you take this substring first or this substring first you cannot go that way now you might also think that okay how about going only the consecutive manner only the consecutive three then that might give us a good result turns out that's not possible too because I've got a test case for you that for that too which is what if we had something like this What if we had something like this? What would you do then? You would go for this first and check if there are any... Um, okay, let's see. I've got... Okay, let's take this one. Okay, let's uh, erase this and then we're going to be finding out the result. if we have like one two and then a dot here and a dot here and take this and then you would take this and then yeah I think that would work so for this case, look, and you might want to think, okay, I'll go only to the consecutive way and consecutive three fashion. If you go it like that, you will say that, okay, the first three, okay, I'm getting something, some dot here. And uh, the first consecutive three, I've got my option. Now for the ne next one, you would definitely have to go through like that. Okay, because I've already you have already used your scarecrow. Now, in order to do that, you know that you have to use um, just two scarecrows too. But if you just think uh, a bit uh, smartly, you will you would notice that what if I take the last substring, just the last substring of three length, uh, like that? Then you're definitely gonna get get a case uh, where you optimize the result down to efficiently one skill pro so there are a bunch of possibilities that's why and I thought that n is like quite small uh, well, why don't we go to a dynamic approach exactly now we're gonna be uh, like moving on to the dynamic approach which is how are we gonna be doing that how did we do, do? think it dynamically 
first think it recursively we thought okay I've got a bunch of options doesn't matter I have to efficient only the fertile one so I only care about the count of the fertile one okay now if I only care about the count of fertile one what would I do is I have each and every point I have two options either I'm gonna take that point or I'm gonna not take that point I have actually thought this problem for the scarecrow uh, as not considering it in the center but considering it in the left point so if I have actually imagined the scarecrow to being in the first position and if I put that scarecrow here it's gonna cover the substring of length 3 like that not considering something like this okay putting the scarecrow here and it's gonna cover this and this now I'm not thinking like that instead I've, I'm thinking a bit smartly which I can go move forward only which is like that moving a scarecrow like that and then it's gonna cover this and this which is a bit smartly thinking uh, to move only uh, one one direction um, forward instead of thinking like in the middle place that's all uh, both of them will, would give us the same result because both of them are actually covering the uh, uh, like three length substring now the way it works is for each and every position I'm either gonna take that position or either I'm gonna put the scarecrow in that position or not if I put the scarecrow in this position I, uh, let's say for for the first case if I don't take the scarecrow or don't put the scarecrow in this position if I don't then I won't do anything but to go just right after the index after after the index where I've been so I'm gonna go to that if I don't take that I'm gonna go to that if I don't take if I don't put scarecrow I'm gonna go to that now what if I do put scarecrow the way it's gonna work is I'm gonna Track down this three length substring from where it starts and count the number of dots are there because these number of dots I need to care I, I need to consider these number of dots because in order uh, when I when I reach at the end of the index I only care about whether I have fully covered all the uh, like dots or fertile fertile options that's why we need that count and that's exactly why we need two states uh, the first state is the position uh, from where the from where we're going to be putting the scarecrow and the other position or the other state would be the count of the number of dots because if it's smaller than some uh, smaller than our resulting result and we won't be we we haven't accomplished our task that's why we need the, the count of our dots too and that's why we need two states okay so where were we yeah when we are gonna be putting the scarecrow at some point where we will consider uh, the first prefix from that position the first prefix of three length of substring count the number of dots are there and then cover them uh, meaning by I'm, I've covered each and every one of them and then uh, I will I will notice that yes from if I start from that point if I if I had started from that point I had I've had like counted uh, I've had like got that much of dots now then where I'm gonna be going I cannot go move forward like immediately forward because I've already figured out and already covered these substring portion that's why I'm gonna be directly moving this index which is if it is index number i then this is index definitely going to be i plus three okay so that's where all things are going so just smoothly go like that and the base case would be if it reaches at the last position just take it that whether i have fulfilled my task or not which is whether i have covered all of my fertile options fertile dots dot characters if i had done it then return uh, return zero and if I had not done it then return int max int max is actually referring that I couldn't do my job because I have to find out the minimum number of ways that's why I'm gonna be returning and 
I've already figured out how how do I do that then I'm that's why I'm returning zero if I'm if I, I haven't accomplished then definitely I'm gonna return integer of max referring that I could not do that now let's move to the code part uh, the way it works uh, basically I have actually taken the condition for n equal to 1 n equal to 2 uh, separately individually just for the sake of simplicity or like safety uh, for the sake of safety you could do that uh, inside like the recursive function too but I thought that maybe this this would be the best option now if n is greater than 2 then we're gonna be going inside that loop inside that if statement and calling the function solve which is basically gonna now let's discuss uh, first this part this is actually yeah first of all we have declared the uh, 2d states first of all there are, there's definitely gonna be two states as I've told you uh, 100 times 100 so not much of a memory that that's gonna cost now yeah so these were the two transitions uh, the first one is that yeah each time I have two two options this is the, this is the recurrence here the recurrence here is that if I take it I'm gonna go if I don't take it that point count as a uh, account as a scarecrow then I'm gonna move to the immediate um, immediate uh, position after that um, and uh, if I if I do take that option as my scarecrow, I know I have to add one. Now, also one thing to notice, each DP is actually representing the result, which is the minimum number. That's why here, as I've taken one scarecrow account, that, that's why I've actually, I'm actually adding that one. And I'm moving to the direction forward, but I plus three. Now, this, this I plus three is exactly what I've told you, uh, which index that I'm considering just after that three length substring which is that and also considering sum plus cc now this sum plus this cc is actually referring how many dots have cleared out or covered okay that's it that's all we count and this cnt is actually the total number of dots are there which is definitely important to in order to track down the best base case uh, because finally after everything we have done when we reach at the end of the tunnel we're going to be comparing how many dots we have covered. If we have covered all the dots, we know that the, this is one possibility of um, putting the scarecrows in a fashion. But to to make it find an optimal way, we did uh, track down in the minimum number of way, which is this minimum function is doing. And if we don't uh, like accomplish the task, then just return the 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 integer max because it is returning and referring that I could not do that so there's no possible way that I could do something like that that's all that's all basically it so yeah I hope you understand that and I hope I made you understand that yeah till next time uh, goodbye